And welcome back to another 3D for Dummies. A lot of people have asked me how to constrain a gun perfectly or an assault rifle. First, we're going to use a technique in Motion Builder, and I'll show you how to do it inside of Maya. But it's much better in Mo Motion Builder, right? You can send the animation to Maya, and you're done. Right? And, uh, of course, this is the Maximo character that has been refined. Look at that. Yeah. And look at this little baby doge. It's so adorable. Look at this baby douche. It's adorable like Arnold. Let's get to it. If you open up Motion Builder, don't forget that you do have your file explorer. It's called Gun Hold Student. Get that Dropbox link right below. Gun Hold Student. You have everything you need. The props, the my file, the textures, and the animation. So let's get started. First, we need to import animation. The animation will be right here on your folder. Gun hold student, but I'm going to grab mine. Firing rifle. That's step one. Let's drag and drop that animation in, right? So we want the animation first. Merge to FBX, and it will be the Mixamo.com animation. Take one doesn't have anything. Sorry, I'll stop. Uh, Mixamo.com. There it is. So now you have animation in. Right? If you hit control space bar, your animation is currently playing at a loop. And if it's not at a loop, make sure to turn this on. That's the loop button. All right, so let's add a character definition right now. I want you to go to F curves on your tab. All right. And what I want you to do is to actually go to negative one frame. All right. So if you were to go back to keyframe one, go back to keyframe one here. Right? Don't do it on your timeline. It's really annoying. Hit Control A so you can have a, a nice visibility for your skeleton. Well, we already know that this is the skeleton that we need for more motion capture. So let's add a character definition. Under negative one keyframe, I want you to open up the navigator, open up the scenes, and here's mixable rig one hips. Right mouse click. And select the branches. So you're basically selecting everything in your scene. Hit Control W to check out the chart and hit F. Right? This is how you know everything has been selected. Hit Control W again to get back to your perspective. And don't forget that if you hit Control 1, 2, 3, and 4, that'll give you four panels. Hit Control 1 again back to perspective. If you're new to Motion Builder. Alright, so now that we have that in, right mouse click on that selection. And let's zero rotations. Right, this will give me a solid T pose. All right, so we got that covered. Now I want you to go to characters right here. Deselect everything. We already know this is the uh, root skeleton that we need. Select the character definition right here. Left mouse click, hold, drag and drop it right here on the root skeleton. Release, select the Characterize option, and Bipedal. All right, awesome. So now we have the character definition for the motion capture. Do not forget to name your motion capture. At, by any means, by the way. It's very important. You need to do it. Do it now. Look at the blue geared icon. Go to Edit, Definition, and Rename. Let's do this again. Blue geared icon, Edit definition and rename there's a much easier way right here on the uh, navigator but that's fine uh, rename and then we're going to call this one just just M cap that's cap see i'm cool too i knew I, I know new terms no i don't i'm just old it's okay all right let's get to it we have the motion capture set right here so this will be the character definition now it's like a puppet it's a puppet there it is Nice. All right, so let's add a character definition for this character now. Right, we need two character definition, so both can drive each other if they want to. So let's set the character definition to none, and let's add one last animation or character an uh, definition. Select the character definition here. Right, let's drag and drop it. Left mouse click, hold, and wait until you hit that root skeleton mark. Release. Characterize, bipedal, and we're all set. Okay, so the character will be character. That's pretty simple. 
the source will be the motion capture. So we'll select M cap. You'll notice that there is some form of calibration. You saw the legs kind of jitter a little bit. We're going to go back to keyframe one so that now we have our animation. If you hit, if you hit control spacebar, I'm stuttering. Uh, we should have the animation. Control spacebar to stop. Control A for skeleton visibility or skeleton display. All right. And what I want to do now is, well, basically bake the animation. Select a blue geared icon, go to bake plot, and bake the skeleton. So we no longer need this uh, Mixamo motion capture. Hit Control A and let's delete them. We can take this character out. Let's put it right here. And I just I like to delete the characters that I don't need anymore so that my uh, character is ready to go for Unreal Engine or even my Mixamo character 36. That's just a mesh. Right mouse click, select the branches. So now you're selecting everything. Right mouse click and delete confirm. Yeah, you're just deleting stuff. I went a little bit fast, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Delete, yes to all, yes to all, yes to all. Right, so now your character is clean. Do not forget to save your work, file and save. And now we're gonna add the prop, right? So for the prop, we wanna go back to keyframe one. Set your source to its uh, basically default bind pose, which will be stance. Um, I did notice that my gun was in the wrong position for this animation. Take a look at this. If I were to select none, you see that the left hand is actually holding the barrel. So we want to make sure that we're not doing that, right? All we have to do is just take that gun to the other side. Isn't there a song like that? Walk on through to the other side, right? That's, I don't know. I think it's a song. Uh, so let's rotate the gun. Let's add a zero value right here. Right. Let's rotate the gun again. Right here, let's set it to zero on rotational values while this is selected. Awesome. And find a good position for your character. You can hit Control F for front view, hit F again to get very close so that we can have a really nice position on this. Hit Control T for top and hit F. See, you can work really efficiently if you work with, uh, if you use uh, different panels. All right, so we're gonna take that location and just set it right here. Awesome, so if I were to take a look at Control E, which is the perspective, hit F, there we go. So now we have a nice position for the gun. Deselect everything. And just make sure that it looks okay. Right, it's not the best, but hey, oh well. All right, so let's add a constraint. But before we do that, let's use that quick technique for the barrel. Right, I want you to take a look at your asset browser, and underneath, right here, we're going to look for elements. And under elements, I want you to select a skeleton root, drag and drop it, bring the skeleton root. To the barrel hit control t for top and i want you to move that skeleton root right here right you can hit control r for right side hit f i don't really see anything on that end but let's hit control e hit f and just make sure that it's right smack in the middle of that barrel all right so let's do this now uh, we're going to add that constraint. Or we're going to parent this root skeleton to the gun. The gun is actually called body right here. I want you to select the skeleton root, left mouse click, hold, drag and drop it to body, release. You want to use a parent so that now, if you hit control A, if you select your barrel or your gun, that skeleton is parented and that's exactly what we want right all right so let's do a real parent constraint now 
to the wrist. So no matter what you do with the animation, the wrist will always control the gun, right? It makes sense, right? I'm trying to break it down in short terms, but okay, so why don't we just do this? Let's look for a parent constraint. Go to constraints and scroll down. There it is. There's a parent child. So what I want you to do is left mouse click hold, drag and drop it to the gun. Release. You want to constrain that object. Remember, this will be driven. This will be the child. And the wrist will be the mother. So we want to select the wrist. Right mouse click right here on that gray selection. You see where it says hips. And I want you to expand to selection. And it'll expand to the right hand. Now there are multiple ways to get there too. If you, you can hit Control W too and hit F right away, and you'll find your selection. So there are multiple ways to do this. Hit Control W again. So now we have the right hand in. I want you to left mouse click hold, drag and drop it to the source. So now we have the constrained object and the source as a parent, child, mother, and just snap it. Hit snap. So when you hit snap, you can go back to your character definition and go to none. So that now we have a really nice constraint for that gun. If you hit control spacebar, right? It's really not that bad. Look at this. It's not that bad. Right? But what if there's a slide? There's a, a really small slide, I guess, right here to hold that barrel. So what we're going to do is actually add that constraint so it just fits perfectly and you have full control of it. So let's do this right now. Look at the blue geared icon, bake the plot to control rig. It'll be an FKIK. If you hit control A, now we have our controllers. The first thing we want to do is select the left, see that, the left IK controller and turn it on. So that'll be translate and rotational values. Right, so now we can move our character's hand. Hit control Z right away. Okay. All right, so our goal is to create a constraint from there to there. Because if you have a slide on your hand, this animation is not bad at all. But if you have a slide on the hand, you want to keep that hold, right? You want to keep it still. So in order for us to do that, we're going to use another parent constraint. And we're going to set that parent constraint to this controller. Right? So select the parent child constraint right here from the constraints tab. Left mouse click hold, drag and drop it to this controller. Release. This will be set as constraint. Right? This will be the child. And this will be the mother, the root skeleton. Select the root skeleton though. So let's select that root skeleton, deselect the gun, right? Let's scroll up, body, and there's a root skeleton right here. So this will be the mother. All right, so left mouse click hold, and there it is. So now we want to snap it. Remember, if I select the gun or the left IK, it's set. If I select the root skeleton right now, nothing really much happens. But if you snap that constraint, now the root skeleton holds the gun. Oh, the left IK controller. Right, so when we when you hit control spacebar, now it's really still. We have that constraint locked at 100%. Right? And no matter what you do, here's the cool part. No matter what you do, you can also just move that location as well. That's the really cool part. And once you're done, well, all you got to do is select the blue geared icon. Do it now. Select the blue geared icon. Bake the plot to skeleton. So that now, when you hit control A, voila. You have a perfect idle for a gunshot. All right. I hope that you learned something. I'll see you later.